Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here tonight, checking out my MX-15 with Danny Boy tonight. How you doing, Danny? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, you ready to help check out uh, installing MX-15? Yes, I am. Alright, so we're going to get do the installation in VirtualBox because it's just a lot easier to show the video uh, in VirtualBox versus trying to boot from hardware. Um, so we're going to start our VirtualBox machine. Now, MX will boot in either legacy or UEFI BIOS mode. So depending on how new or old your machine is, it can boot either way. Uh, you get a lot more options with the live bootloader. Uh, you get all these options here in the if you boot legacy, if you boot UEFI, you gotta go through a menu system. There's an, actually a, uh, another menu that says custom boot with menus that'll walk you through having some new options. We'll show you a few of the things you can hit with hitting the function keys. F1 gives you help to, help to explain everything that's in the bootloader options. Also, it tells you the the password, the default passwords for the live system. Uh, F2 sets your default language. If your language is not English, choose a different language. It's uh, We support quite a few. Localization is better in some than others, but uh, for the most part, it's it's getting a lot better. Uh, F3 gives us time zones, so select your time zone for the best clock experience. If you ever thought you'd say that. Let's see. What's the closest city to us, Daniel? Hmm. Uh, I have no clue. Oh, New York. Oh, New York. Okay, so New York. <laughs> And then F4 is going to give you a bunch of other little options for for di for different things. These are really handy if you're running live. So like if you want to load the whole system into RAM, you can use a two RAM option. If you're booting from a dit from a CD, but want to load from the USB key, kind of like a poor man's plop bootloader, you might say, uh, you can do that with the from equals USB key. If for some reason some machines have problems with USB 2, you can turn USB 2 completely off. You can turn ACPI off, which I recently had to do with my old Sony laptop. It did not used to have to do that, <laughs> have to do that now. So that's that's weird. And then we have some utilities here for setting for trying to set your uh, hardware clock. That's what HW clock stands for. It'll ask you if you're set to UC, UTC or local. That's if you're booting, well, yeah, it's actually nice because a lot of distributions ignore the clock and we've found that you get some weird messages at boot time if you don't <laughs> ignore the if you ignore the clock uh, so UTC is a universal time that most Linux systems if you're running Linux all the time you're probably already set to UTC if you're running Windows and this is your first time your clock is probably local so you can set that up ahead if you wish the installer will also try to make a reasonable guess F5 gives you persistence options I will touch on persistence in a separate video. Suffice to say, if you want to just run MX Live off a USB stick, uh, click All Persist, and it'll walk you through creating persistence files from the very first boot. There's no magic. I mean, there's magic, but it's all on MX's side. You don't have to know anything except how big your USB stick is. So <clears throat> uh, that's a good way to go. You don't need that for, um, for, uh, for installing. F6 is the fail-safe menu. It gives you some different options to hit in case uh, your particular machine needs a certain option. This Intel IG graphics off switch it can be handy on things on certain Intel chipsets. If you have a problem, give it a try. If you have a problem with a live CD not loading from a from a in a in a DVD drive or a CD drive, try the load equals all option. There's a few pieces of hardware out there that isn't isn't load the driver doesn't load by default unless you select load equals all. You also got some safe and fail safe video options for those times when you get a black screen when you boot. Uh, they've really tried to make MX boot the first time out of the box so Dan go ahead and enter there and we'll boot MX15. This is the 64-bit version and it's going to go through its usual stuff here. We got color coded error uh, boot not error messages, informational messages, I should say. And we'll be up on the desktop here in just a second. So here comes the default desktop. And we've got our toolbar on the left. We have some notifications that our wired connections working, and we have the new welcome menu. Now, if you want to check out uh, some things 
uh, ahead of time. Check out the user manual. Check out the wiki. Uh, they're both updated for MX15. Uh, there's some pretty good wiki entries. Uh, the wikis, the user manuals for your everyday stuff, the wiki, uh, like setting your network connection or installing OpenVN or something like that. Uh, the wiki is for your more stranger items or your more technical information. We have a link to the MX Tools that will bring up the tool menu, which is pretty nice. Mm-hmm. And of course, a link to videos at the MX website, our forums, and a contribute link because, hey, Someone's got to pay for all those servers. All right, so we'll close this, and we're going to get the install rolling. Uh, Daniel, why don't you go ahead and click the installer? Uh, I will mention uh, single clicks by default in MX. Uh, so you see we get the normal high welcome terms of use stuff. That there's not really much in the way of terms of use, so... Go ahead, next to the thing. All right, so here we have to choose our disk. Now, this is actually a virtual box, so this disk is naked. There's nothing on it. Uh, if you wanted to set up your partitions, uh, you could click the... Uh, what do you think, Dan? Is it obvious what you would click here? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and click it. The Run Partition Tool. And that's going to bring you Gparted. And you can you can partition the drive yourself if you want to. I'm going to do that real quick because I like doing it ahead of time. The auto installer on a blank disk is nice, but this will help in the in the uh, thing. So Dan, why don't you go ahead and set up a new uh, thing, and we're going to click um, uh, GPT. That's I've been using that lately. Click apply. The nice thing about GPT is that it doesn't have a limitation on a number of primary partitions on the disk. MS-DOS requires four, has a limit of four. GPT does not have a limit at all. So that's nice. So go ahead and do a right click on, if we, if we right click on the, on, on, the, on, the part, on the empty space, we can say new. And then we can actually, and we're gonna make a, li- we're gonna make a little bit of swap. So in this after thing here, we're gonna type, um, I'm gonna leave it a gig of swap space. So that's going to make a new partition, then we're going to, we're going to make the swap. we we'll make the swap here with, uh, uh, you just hit the create as and you select swap. Actually, primary partition is right, I forgot. It's ext4, you select Linux swap instead. Okay, click add and we and you are good to go. And then uh, and nothing's actually changed with the partition editor, so you hit the little return button up here. Do you want to apply? Yes, we wouldn't be here if we didn't. That's going to be real quick on this machine. It may take a little longer on real hardware. Once you're done, you click close. You're good to go, and you can just exit. Uh, you can just exit uh, the partition tool. Okay, we exited the installer, but we didn't have to. Rookie mistake there, Danny boy. That's all right. Just run the installer again. Nothing's nothing's bad. So next, go back to where we were. Now this time we don't have to make the partitions because they're already made. So select we got see we got we're selected already our right partition we're going to use none or existing for the swap yes we want to format and do all that fun stuff click next and yes to f- destroy everything on our naked partition there's <laughs> nothing there to destroy we will destroy this planes of nothing okay <laughs> we're going to pause the video here until the install is complete and then we'll walk you through the rest of it all right, so we're about done with the install, Dan. So now we're going to be installing the bootloader. Uh, that's right. So we're going uh, in in MX. Uh, the default for a legacy boot would be to install to the MBR, which is the master boot record. Uh, you see, it's already selected as the default, right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Right. So you can install to root. Uh, but what that means is, if you already have a bootloader, you have to tell that bootloader that your existing bootloader where MX is located, so it boots on the root yeah. uh, uh, or update you know if it's another grub installation already you can update the grub on that installation and MX will, should get picked up you'll see a grayed out area over here called ESP that's the EFI system partition if you would booted this in EFI I'll oh, see there you go EFI system partition <laughs> if you booted this in UFI or EFI mode that option should be the default instead of MBR uh, we're going to click next here since we're already set up for the MBR and this will take a second. Now, it, this actually doesn't take quite as long on the 64-bit installation because the 32-bit actually comes with two kernels. 
one for the system supporting PAE or physical address extension, and another that support doesn't that is uh, for kernels that don't support physical address extension huh. or PAE. That was uh, even one minute. Yes, it's, it's not. It doesn't take very long. Yeah, it's a couple minutes. So it takes about twice as long on the 32-bit. Uh, other than that, the installation is identical. So on computer name, you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it MX1 for now. Uh, Samba server for networking, fine. I, you can just click past this. Computer domain doesn't really do anything unless you need it to. Okay. So here you can change your keyboard settings if you want to. You can change your locale, but ours is correct. We set it at the. If you set it at the. Uh, initial bootloader screen this should already be correct where you set you can see that my clock is not checked is not checked for system clock using local because my system is actually set to UTC already this should default to whatever it is and also this should default to either 12 hour format or 24 hour format depending on your locale time zones right click on view on the service settings to see different things you can turn off I'm actually going to turn off Bluetooth. We're going to uncheck. We're going to check uncheck the Bluetooth one because I don't have Bluetooth on this system, so it's really kind of a waste of time to install it. So uh, to uh, set it up, so click click. We also see that NFS is available, but it's unchecked. If you plan on using network shares using the NFS system, go ahead and check that, and you'll have it. I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to leave mine off. Click next to advance to uh, back to the screen and then next again to go to the user creation. Alright, so now we're going to create a user. So create a user and password. Well, I'm making my uh, login name. Good enough, huh? Okay. Yeah, why not? Alright. Now the super secret password here. All right, oh. very good. And it will check if it's if it's set up by default. Now root I, the administrator account. I, I might have made that I think, wrong. I think Dad's gonna set up the administrator here to something I know, and then I, I might have made the uh, user password the second one. You think you made the user password uh, wrong? Yeah, let's see. I, I let's see. Oh, yeah. look. User passwords don't match. Please try again. No <laughs> problem. So you're going to erase your user passwords. But I, I remember. Hello. Just type in your password. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have some checks so you don't get totally messed up. There we go. Yeah, and I'm actually going to use a better root, root password. With letters and symbols, and clicking next. That's all going to get set up and created. And we should get a nice little dialog saying we're done. All right. Okay, we're done. Yep. So, so finish. Yep. Okay. And do you want to reboot? Sure. All right. So we're going to reboot. Remember, this is VirtualBox, so things are going to look a little weird on the reboot. But it is going to ask us to eject to uh, take the disk out. Say so we take the disk out. So hit enter. Since we're going, to, we're going to virtually take the disk out here. Okay, booting back up. We're going to get the regular boot menu. We're going to go ahead and click OK or enter, and get our installation back up and running. And here we are in our fresh Looks. install of MX15. Uh, you'll see now we have a little checkbox saying to show this dialog a startup and MX welcome in case you want to do Not have it, it have it see it every no so you see it every time oh. it only defaults once oh. that's exactly right so so uh, at any rate for tips tricks and how tos head over to mepiscommunity.org or throw up a post at forum.mepiscommunity.org this is Dolphin Oracle and Andy, Andy boy signing off have a great evening not bad Danny thanks for coming. You're welcome.